Hey, plant fam, welcome to Wind Down the Week with Angie. I'm your host, Angie, owner of Steel City Plant Company here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. This podcast is brought to you by Soltech Solutions. I am so excited to have you all here with us today for our Halloween episode. Woo! <laughs> so we are so excited to have Camille Bell Hill with us today. Camille is a voracious reader, lover of the arts, and certified potterhead, as am I. Combining her love for plants and design, she curated a brand and a community in Plant Blurred and Black People with Plants that reflect our personal ethos and are open and welcoming to all. She grounds her work in all areas of her life in adaptive creativity, like the joy in watching a leaf unfurl or falling in love with a character in a new book. Camille knows that magic lives just beyond what we can see. Welcome, Camille. Hello, hello. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be a part of the Halloween episode. You look amazing. This is so much fun. Thank you. So do you. I love it. I see your potter tie. Oh, yeah. Your, oh, your yeah. crisp tie. <laughs> I, I know that you are also a potter head. So I was yes. like, oh, I need to yes. do this up. Yes. I am also. How far back does your obsession go? It goes back to when they are, were originally released. I was just telling my now fifth grader who was reading uh, the seventh book that you know, I would advance order the copy and was so excited when it would arrive. And the first movie that was released, my sister and I went to a midnight showing. Yes. No one was, no one else was there. We were the only ones in our capes and hats and just ready for fun. So it's like, I've been a fan since, the, however old the series is without dating myself is how long I've been a fan. Me too. I remember that the release would always land when we were on our family vacation in Wildwood. And it was when Wildwood used to have a bookshop on the boardwalk and the line would be all the way down at midnight and we would wait there in our hats and capes. Oh and my God, that books. is fantastic. Right. It's like the current fans don't even know that excitement. You know, they just click on order and they just get the book. They they don't know that excitement of the anticipation and it's too easy you know, now. We had to stand it's in too line easy. at midnight. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is exactly right. I, I have a confession to make. I actually have a tattoo for Harry Potter. Oh, um, I love it. It's not aging well. It, it's a lip tattoo. I'll show everybody. <laughs> I can't believe I'm embarrassing myself like this on camera. Come on, show us. Okay, oh, it wow. said YOLO, and the L is a lightning bolt for Harry Potter. <laughs> I am I, I am thoroughly impressed. I, I mean, I'm I'm... First of all, how much did that hurt on the inside? Yeah, it sucked. That was so stupid. Wow. I was in college. I, I'm impressed. I'm I was impressed, sober, though. though. That might be more embarrassing, that that was a sober No, decision. no. I think that that's a rule, isn't it? I have one tattoo also, which I'm not going to show. It, all, it too, has not aged well. <laughs> no. They fade. I mean, nobody tells you how much they really fade. I know. Now They're I, not I just there have... forever. I just have lightning bolt O left. Right, so. exactly, exactly. Mine, yeah, you can't even tell what it was. It was just a rose, you know, kind of typical, but you can't even tell anymore. <laughs> I, I've toyed with the idea of getting it outlined again, but I'm not doing that. Who am I kidding? <laughs> I, I hear you. I've made a promise to myself when I was getting that one done, no touch-ups. It no touch up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, this is a once and done thing. <laughs> one, one and done. That is too funny, right? And that's how it was too. I thought I was gonna get more. I always said I'd get more, but I just never did. <laughs> I, I never did. You. Never got around to it. Well, I am glad we got through the love of Harry Potter because now, now I feel like we're we're on the same level here. Right. Before. Exactly. Now we're, we're totally bonded. <laughs> so we're gonna start with our icebreaker: petal and bud. So okay. petal is something that has happened recently that was exciting. And okay. bud is something that you're looking forward to. Okay. So I'll kick it off. Petal. Oh, we just, just sticking to the Halloween theme. We had our first ever plant and pumpkin workshop at our plant shop. Oh. We have a special event room. That's where I am right now. And we had 15 people come and carve a pumpkin and put a plant inside. Oh, here's mine, actually. <laughs> that is so cool. So we made pumpkin. That's adorable. Pop, which was, it was just so much fun. We had mimosas. We laughed. We carved pumpkins. It was a really good day. So that is my petal. 
That fun. Is so fun. what I'm looking forward to, I would say Halloween. I'm just really yeah. excited for Halloween. We have yeah. adult trick or treat coming up at the shop where we're giving out booze and vintage candy. I, yeah, I would still be there. I would be there. <laughs> that is great. It'll be a That's good time. Great. I love Halloween. So it's I do too. I do too. Halloween yeah. and Christmas are pretty much yep. tied for me. So this is actually my Halloween light costume. My official costume is 067. Do you know are you from do you know what I mean? From um, did you watch Squid Game? Squid Game. Yep. I was <laughs> gonna say player 067. <laughs> yes, yes. That's my official costume, which hasn't arrived yet. You know, I'm a little worried. Squid but Games was crazy. It was bananas, but so good. I like, know. it just blew me away. It was not at all the gore I was expecting, not that yeah. story so full of heart. I was not yes. expecting that. I was, like, you know, committed. Committed, completely. And their stories. Totally invested. Yeah completely invested. Yep. I was all in. Yeah. Okay. So pedal, pedal is something that's happening now, right? Yes. Or it just happened or happening now. Okay. So one thing that's really cool. Um, I, am I allowed to like name platforms or is this yes, only? Please. Okay. All right. I just uh, was invited into this really small, like little incubator creator program on Pinterest, which is, I don't even know how they like how they caught wind of me, but I'm thrilled to be in there and um, I, I just kind of like tackle. I love that platform, but it's always kind of like befuddled my brain. I, I feel like right. I can never quite figure out. So I'm really excited about uh, being involved in that. And Bud is my continuous where I'm turning our spare bedroom into a bonafide plant room. My plants oh, yeah. need a room. Yes, you know, they, they need do. they need a space of their own. So I'm working on that and we're close to finish, but not quite. And I can't wait for the big reveal. That is so exciting. Yeah, I can't it's wait exciting. To, we're still in an apartment. So the plants have taken over and I can't wait. The only reason I really want a house is to, for a plant room or a sunroom. Just for a plant way. room, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, now I kind of have them all over the place. And a few have... Um, We've had some casualties because yeah. they're not all in one place, you know? Right. So I'm really looking forward to kind of like, there'll still be a few downstairs to enjoy, but they will mostly be in that room. And that creates such a meditative space then for yes. you to be able to exactly. go in exactly. and time. That's exactly right. Are you going to have a reading space in there? I know you're into into. The of reading. course. Yeah. Of course, I'm going to put a day bed in there just so I can chill and hang out. And it'll be really like, you know, you know, really right. unplugging. Like right now there's a full bed, but who's sleeping at my house? It's right. like since COVID, like no one's sleeping here. It's like that space is just yeah. a waste, you right. know? So it will oh. totally be my, my chill. If you can't find mommy, she's in the plant room with the door locked. Oh yeah. <laughs> You'll have to post about it so I can live vicariously. For yes. You yes. 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 <laughs> I will. I definitely will. Well, what are you drinking today? Today, since it was wine down the week, I got a glass of red. I like oh, red. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, I think it's a Cabernet. That's usually what a Cabernet or um, Pinot with a little splash of orange liqueur. So it has Ooh. like an aroma of sangria, but it's not sangria. That's amazing. That's yeah. so creative. I love that. I love wine, any type of wine. But today yeah. I'm drinking mead. Have you had mead yet? I have not had mead yet. It is like a honey wine is how I would Ooh. describe it. We have this amazing meadery right here in Bethlehem on the south side called Colony Meadery. And I'm drinking their straight no chaser today, oh. which um, is super, super good. It's Orange blossom honey, providing bright, clean flavor that defines this award-winning award mead. So lots that of citrus notes. Delicious. Honey. I love that. Yeah, it's great. You can drink it cold or room temp. I have mine cold, but it's delicious. I love mead, and we're very lucky to have them right in our downtown. So thank you to Colony Meadery for uh, so, having their mead with us today. So wait, you have to tell me more about what mead is. That's like the grape variety? It is, it's its own type of 
alcohol. So it's not beer, oh. it's not wine, it's mead, and it's fermented ah. honey is what makes it. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's like, I'm, it, I have a, a liquor shopping list, so that I'll be adding to the list. I must try that. Fermented and honey. I mean, I've never even heard of that. Gluten-free, and it's 13% alcohol. Okay. So it's a win-win. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very much so. Very much so. Very good. Yeah. Check out Colony Meadery uh, online or their Instagram. Account. Yeah. I'm really going to cool give, stuff. yeah. 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 I'll, I'll tag you when I'm drinking that because yes, that's next up. <laughs> it's very refreshing. It's just something that you can't describe until you've tasted it yourself. So right. Right. All right. So cheers. I see. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Halloween. <laughs> Here's the okay, we're going to play a drinking game to just like okay. keep it going with booze and Halloween. So I'm, we're going to go yes, back. I'm all over that. We're going to go back <laughs> and forth naming Halloween movies. Okay. And whoever gets stumped first has to drink. Okay. All right. You can go first. The Shining. Hocus Pocus. Scream. Casper. Halloween. Ooh, uh, Halloween Town. Nightmare on Elm Street. The Ring. Psycho. Ooh, uh, oh, okay. Ooh, Practical Magic. I love that one. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. I think that's the whole title. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Goosebumps. Oh, 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 um, uh, Carrie. Oh, that's a good one. Um, Who Be Halloween. I love that one. That's new on Netflix as of like last year. It's so funny. Adam Sandler. What is it? Who Be Halloween. Who Be Halloween. Okay, I got to check that's that funny. one out. <laughs> All right. It. Ooh. People Under the Stairs. Um, why am I blanking? Um. I, I guess I got a drink. I, I, yeah. I, all right, I'll take a sip. You didn't even touch on our favorites. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, classic. Oh, that is true. Mm -hmm. I was thinking like real horror, horror. I know. Oh, but I guess, okay. Yeah. This is true. Okay. I'll drink with you. Okay. Um. Oh my God, why? Uh, it. <laughs> No, not it. I just said it. Us, us, us. Oh, that us. is good. Us. <laughs> uh, get out. <laughs> um, I love all of his movies. Yeah, he's incredible. Oh, my God. Um, all right, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. Yeah, that's a good one. My turn to drink. As I, I hear a chainsaw you. outside, did you say Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I yet? did not, but there you go. Chainsaw. Exactly. All I can hear, that was really creepy timing. Friday the 13th. Oh, good one. Which I've actually never seen. I've seen it, but it was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I know what you did last summer. Okay. Uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead. Insidious. Um, what is that? Um, my God. Uh, the thing. That's a Sabrina, thing. the teenage witch. That's a show, but still one of my favorites. Okay. Stranger things. Oh yeah. Evil. Um, uh, castle rock. Oh, I love that show. That was good. <laughs> Ooh, Haunting of the Hill House. Oh, yeah. Was that was amazing. American Horror Story. I was just going to say that. Hotel. American Horror Story. <laughs> Coven is my favorite season, though. I don't yeah. know if they beat it yet. Coven and Asylum. I feel like it Ooh. started going downhill, you know. Did you but watch it, the latest it, season? I have not watched it since Hotel. That was the last one. The last one. season was um, pretty good. Oh, it was. Because, yeah. you know, his his shows kind of go off the rails after they've been on yeah. too long. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you ever watch Nurse Ratchet? Yes. Oh, Very good. I loved it. 
Very good. Yeah, me too. Very good. Like after good. fantasy, horror is my, or you know what, actually maybe flipped. Maybe horror is my number one genre of movies and books and then fantasy, but I don't know. They're probably neck and neck, like so yeah. close. Same with my fiance. I'll come home in the middle of the day and he's just watching a horror movie. And I'm like, are you okay? <laughs> Should I be concerned? What exactly. Exactly. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I used to even watch, um, oh my God, what, it, what was the show? It was on um, FX. Oh my God. The Strain. Oh, that yeah. was so dark. It even got like too dark for me. And that's saying something. Yeah. I mean, they just, w no, they just went so far with that show. I eventually did have to stop watching it. I could only watch it during the daytime. Yeah. It was just something about it that was so sinister that just got into my head too much. I've I heard that. I haven't seen it yet. So I'm going to have to put yeah. that on Maybe, It was I really... <laughs> I think I, I stopped watching like after the second season. I was like, all right, this is too much. This is yeah. like, this is, I want to need a therapist after this show. It's just like, <laughs> it is too much. Ugh. Mm -mm. So what is your favorite part about Halloween? The dressing up for yeah. sure. You know, I don't trick or treat. I mean, I haven't, I did when I was younger, but I literally dress up every single year. Like I have not stopped dressing up. Yeah. And usually we do a, gr a whole group theme, but it's really just like, you know, the whole fantasy of it and right. embodying your favorite characters or different persona, something. It's just, I love it. Best Halloween candy. Snickers. Oh. I love Snickers. I go, thankfully my kids don't like chocolate. So I go deep diving yeah. in their bag. And I, I particularly like the little, you know, teeny weeny ones. You know, I love, I love Snickers. Yeah. Reese's pumpkins though are my go to, it's my weakness. Ah, I too love a Reese's cup. Yeah. But you like the pumpkin shape. Um, I like them, but the eggs for Easter are for sure the best. Oh, because it's got a lot taste, of peanut they butter. They taste the same. They all taste different. Really? The trees, the oh, hearts, have to put that to the a pumpkins. Taste test. And the eggs all have a specific taste, I swear. Angie, I got to tell you, I'm not buying it, but. <laughs> I, I think they put a special ingredient in each one to make them taste different so that you crave okay. it that time of year. I okay. don't know. It could be completely psychological based all on right. the packaging. I don't know. But I'm I like the eggs. Go. I, I'm going to give it a go. I love the chocolate and peanut. That's, that's probably like my second favorite. And they don't eat the chocolate. So, you know, I go ham. Yeah. I, I want to hear our listeners' opinion. So drop your thoughts in the comments about this whole Reese's thing. Are Do they taste different? And if so, which holiday is the best oh. Reese's? I, I want to hear from you. <laughs> that is, I'm going to have to, yeah. I'm very curious about this. Very curious. Yeah. I'm convinced, but. Okay. I'll go with All right. it. Back to Harry Potter. Which movie is your favorite? My favorite movie and book is The Order of the Phoenix. Okay. That's, a good That's, one. My, That's favorite. my second favorite. What's my your favorite? My first favorites are tied. So Sorcerer's Stone, just because right. the nostalgia, I think, of right. it of all course. starting. Of and Deathly Hollows Part 2 for Part movie. 2 for the movie. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Part yeah. 2 was definitely better. Definitely. Yeah. But I, I love... Um, I love uh, Order of Phoenix. It's my favorite. I love that. I love the book, the movie, everything. Yep. It's so great. I and do. we recently rewatched, because I have a fifth grader who's now reading the series, and I read it with the now junior, only up to the third book. I could not reread the whole series. I just wasn't able, but we've rewatched all the movies several times. I had completely forgot that Dumbledore died in book six. I know. I don't and know why. I, I, every time. Every single time. I'm never every ready time. for it. Never. Never. Mm. Never. Damn. But I I had like moved it forward into Deathly Hallows, but it's like, right, no, he died before Deathly Hallows, but yeah. yeah. So, oh. okay, I have a question for you. Okay. Who's your favorite character? Ooh, my favorite character. Professor McGonagall. I love Hagrid. her. Oh yeah. yeah, I can see that. I love. He Snape. just makes me laugh. 
Yeah. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah. How about I yours? I love both of them. I love Snape. Yeah. Even though, I do love you know, him too. I do. Because he's a good guy in the end. Like, it all makes sense. Even when he's villainous, though, I find that I am attracted to. That's yeah. why I guess I'm in Slytherin. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I just. I don't really buy. I feel like J.K. at the end threw like like you know a hail mary and made up that whole. It's like was he really a good guy and we just didn't realize it? Like I don't. Because a lot really of it didn't it. add up still. Like, no, it, didn't it doesn't tie add up, up all the strings. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It does not make sense. It never will to me. But I still love him. Yeah, I love me Nate. Too. Yeah. Ugh. I'm going to have to go home and watch these movies now. I, it's just put me in the holiday spirit. You... <laughs> oh, so no. speaking of holiday and Harry Potter, when you walk into my apartment, I took fishing line and tied it around LED candles uh-huh. and hung them from our ceiling. Oh. So the whole oh. ceiling is flaring, my God. floating it's candlesticks. It's like a great hall. Yes. And we oh leave God, them up through so Christmas cool. because it was a Christmas thing too. So those stay up. I that would stay up fun. all year long. That yeah, amazing. would not. That's incredible. I love that idea. It was yeah. so simple. I went on Amazon, bought LED flickering candles, like twelve of them, fishing line, and I'm so those. into that. I wonder if I could pull that off before Halloween. Yeah, huh. it should be like I love it. Minutes to hang them up. I love that idea. Yeah. That is fantastic. <laughs> That, the, right. that that great hall is probably like the one thing um, in Hogwarts that I would just so love to experience. I mean, yeah. the great hall is amazing. Oh, I'd love to just hang out there, eat a meal. Yeah, completely, completely. Well, completely. let's get into plants. I really want to hear about your work with Plant Blurred and also what made you start Black People with Plants and how it's going. Like, I want all of it. Okay, okay. What are you well, up plant- to? Plant Blurred, you know, it, it, I think that it has the same origin story as all of those plant accounts. So, you know, we all were into plants and our non-planty friends and family were just tired of hearing about it, you know? Yeah. So one day I just posted a picture and I remember what it was. It was my crispy wave fern, which is now gone, is no longer with us. But at the time it was just so incredibly beautiful And I was like, you know what, let's just see. Let's see what's out there. Let's see if I can find a few like-minded people. I had no idea there was this whole, like, community and, and, like, you know, that the planted gram was this whole thing. And it really has been such a tremendous source of joy. Like, I love my plants. I love talking about my plants. I love posting about my plants. So that account and the people that I've met and the other accounts, it's just like, it's the glue that's keeping all of this shit together. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. It's great. And like so many incredible opportunities, something that I can't really talk about yet. Like it just, you know, it's like, I went to law school. My mom's a lawyer. My sister's a lawyer. Wow. Everything was pretty like straight and narrow, you know, not unconventional at all. So it's so crazy that after that path, this is where I've ended up and I'm like making a whole career out of it. So it's just like, it makes the heart swell. And Black people with plants, um, at the height of the pandemic, with the tragic killing of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, Everyone was home, so we had a captive audience, right? And there are on Instagram, I call them um, repost accounts or sharing what Black people with plants is, you know? And, and there's no original content. They're just reposting other people's pictures. Right. And generally, the feeds are fairly homogenous with a scattering of diversity here and there. But during... Um, the, the protest and after Brianna and uh, Mr. Floyd were killed, you saw Black Lives Matter like trend, you know, it was like trending. And then the feeds changed. And it was like, wow, okay, this is great. You know, that it's becoming more inclusive and 
they're highlighting other accounts. Because when I first started Plant Blurred, I could not find Black plant accounts. Mm -hmm. You know, at first, Instagram on their Discover page, every single plant account, they were all white. And then I stumbled upon um, Black with Plants. And from there, I found like some other accounts. And, you know, then I was able to diversify and make my own feed more inclusive and reflective of not only me, but my friends and family, you know? So at first, when the Black Lives Matter hashtag was a trend on Instagram, which is just despicable that it would ever be considered a trend. Right. Then it went, you know, like after a week or two, it just went back to business as usual. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, you know, infuriated me and a few, you know, a lot of other people. And I just, it's like, you know, I'm just going to start a page. And it's like my love letter to us because we're not a hashtag. We're not a trend. Our lives are not just trauma. You know, so Black people with plants is just about Black people, Black peopling, just doing regular old, you know, tending to our plants and the joy that is our everyday life. And I love that page. It's like my little baby. I love it too. I, I follow it. And I'm so glad you touched on where it started from. And because I just don't think that a lot of people understand the need for spaces like that. Right. For people who are like-minded have backgrounds, like to come together. Can you speak a little bit about what that means and why that's important to bring the Black community together onto a platform like that? What does it mean for the people inside of that community to be able to connect? I think that it just is so simple. It's like, it's just a reflection of yourself like everybody you want to see yourself you know you don't want to feel like you're the only lonely or an outlier or you know i'm doing something who, that people who don't have my shared experience are into when that's just all wrong you know it's like there there is this reflective community and you know sometimes like in there was a little tiny bit of pushback i i would say i'm so grateful that it hasn't been a lot of like negative comments on there, you know, like, what if we had a white people? I don't, I have not surprisingly gotten any of that. Um, so I'm really glad for that. But then my, my response would be, you know, there doesn't need to be a white people with plants page because most of those reshare pages mostly share other white accounts and there'll be a smattering of Latina or Latinx or Asian or, you know, just every now and again, but the lion's share, it's, it's homogenous. And I think that people just want to see themselves. You just want to see yourself reflected back and feel included and feel like you're being seen. You know, your hobbies, your interests are affirmed. It's not, you're not an outlier. This is not weird or unusual. You know, we're all doing it. It's just a matter of just like belonging, you know, and it's yeah. just like, a confirmation, yeah, you do belong here. We're here. Welcome. Come on yeah. in. You know, the water's warm. It's great. So, how can other plant lovers who are not in the Black community be allies and interact with that account or content in a helpful or effective way? I think that when the opportunity arises to kind of um, elevate, or share or promote that you kind of think outside of your box and you don't only consider people that have your same background, you know, that you just think for a minute, oh, you know, this other account is great. So I'll also promote them. I think that um, that's the way to do it. And it has to be done like consistently, not just like when something is trending and hot and when something tragic happens. And right, we exactly. All, it's like just always do it. For a exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, but people, um, I think we're all guilty of self-segregating. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that um, it's kind of human nature just to kind of like gravitate towards like. And I think that how we can all in general do better is you know, just reach across the aisle, you know, and th that's the, the simplest of terms, just, you know, just make I that somewhere, effort. 
something I think I learned a lot over the last year. So my background is in um, diversity, equity, and inclusion for the chamber here in Bethlehem and Mm -hmm. across the Lehigh Valley. That's my past life. But something that we talked about a lot was knowing when to pass the mic. Yes. So as a white woman, yes, I want to be an ally, but sometimes it's not for me to speak on. Right. And it's for me to hold up my microphone and pass it to someone who can take that and run with it and be the correct platform. Absolutely. I agree. And not only like sharing the mic, but also like listening to understand and to um, empathize with instead of like listening to respond. I think that we're all guilty of that. You know, we're, we're listening, but we're really just waiting for that pause in the conversation where we can jump in. And then you've centered yourself. You, you didn't listen and you yeah. haven't really gained anything. And, you know, from there, nothing can really change. So I think like really just listening. Um, the other day, uh, Plant Queen, Christopher, he was, it was a national coming out day. And that was one of the things that he was talking about, like, How can heterosexual people be better allies to, you know, the LGBTQ community? And if someone is coming out or sharing, listen, just listen. Like, it's like, it's such a no brainer, but I just don't think that generally speaking, people do it because even when it's well-intended, you just want to offer up something. And there's like this inclination to want to just offer advice or fix, but sometimes it really is just like, just listen, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think letting yourself be known as an ally is always important, but sometimes, Mm. you know, screaming it the loudest of, Hey, I'm an ally. I'm an ally. Look at what we're doing. We're so great. Like, it's not about you. No, no. I think that's like the worst way like that. That's the red flag, you know? Yeah. So it's like, if you're an ally, it's just like that. um, You know, if you really are something, you don't have to go around saying that you are, you just do it, you know? Yeah. You just do it. It's not for likes. It's not for attention. It's not for credit. You just like doing it. So. So how long has that account been running? That account started pandemic. Yeah. June, 2020 was its birthday. So it just turned a little over a year in June. And And I mean, it's a vibrant connected, like it's an amazing account and that's new. I love it. I love it. And it's me yeah. by myself. Yeah. I tried to get my, my teenager to help me out. And she quickly lost interest. <laughs> I was like, come on, I'll pay you. <laughs> she just, <laughs> You're on your own. I'm on my own. But I mean, it's so fun. And I've made like connections over there too. I Even like all the accounts that I follow on plant blurt or that follow me and that I've interacted with, it always blows my mind. It's like, there's someone new, like every single week. I'm like, Oh my God, welcome. It's almost, it's like a welcome mat. It's like, here we are. Welcome. You know, it's just, I love it. Hmm. What's your favorite part about the plant community? My favorite part about the plant community is the connectedness. Like, even though we are connecting on social media, there's this real actual connection that's like real life, you know what I mean? Like it's not just the comments and the double taps, like there's real conversations going on in the DMs and we're texting each other, we're meeting up. I really love the plant swaps. I mean, that's gotta be like the best. And it's all, not that we're all the same, obviously we're we're vastly different all throughout the plant community, but there's like this shared real passion and interest and enthusiasm. So then when you get together, it just like repeats, you know, and it's just like, it's got like a built in vibe. So I think that's what I love about the plant community. They pass the vibe check. Yes. They do. You know, it's like, <laughs> I love that. It's great. I feel like it's we need great. that on shirts or something. You should, right. you should start making shirts. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> that's, um, yeah, I love your shop, by the way. So Thank why don't you, you touch a little bit about that? Well, that that's also like, I'm so like, it's blurred because I'm so geeky nerdy. I always love like graphic t-shirts. I always want, if I'm into it, I want the world to know I'm into it. You know, so I have my Game of yeah. Thrones, 
t-shirts. I got my Potter t-shirts, my Hamel Nerd t-shirts. So like geeky plant t-shirts only made just perfectly logical sense, you know? Yeah. So um, I launched that in, I think, May or June of this year. And that's been fun. It's been fun designing stuff and coming up with kitschy things. I, I get to sometimes work with my brother. And it's it's been another source, source of, like, joy and just fun, you know? Yeah. And it takes the engagement to a whole nother level. Because yeah. then you have people shopping with you and people that are wearing yeah. the same shirts and yeah. talking about them. Yes. Yeah. And when they tag me and I'm like, oh my God, look, she's got me on her chest. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> or if I have, I'm wearing my own t-shirt, it's also like weird. And so I had um, one of the shirts is Mother of Plants in the Game of Thrones. It's cool. It's free public font, you know, no copyright infringement here. But um, I went into a plant shop and they're like, oh, that's so cool. I love that shirt. And I was like, I made it. It's my brand. And she just was blown away by this. And I was like, yeah, I did. I swear to God. And she, we just kept going back and forth. She didn't believe it. I don't know why she didn't believe it. But, and then she just was so impressed. And I was like, oh, you know, it was just like a fun reaction that I wasn't expecting from anyone. <laughs> I'm going to have to check out your Potter shirts. Yes. Yes, there are, of course, Potter shirts. Some of those. <laughs> there are, of course, Potter shirts because how could I not, right? Yeah, and to my family that is listening, that would be a great birthday and Christmas gift for me. Thank you. <laughs> I love the hint. It's quite subtle. It was lovely. <laughs> Very subtle. <laughs> Very subtle. <laughs> I love it. What is your favorite plant? I know that's a hard question, but that is a very hard question. I can answer very easily my plant family, my favorite plant family. Right now, I'm just so gobsmacked for Hoyas. Yeah. I just, Same. I cannot get enough of Hoyas. It's like, I have one blooming at home and I check it every day. Like it just has. Oh the, my God. Like yeah. The, the little peduncle. Thing. Yeah. The peduncle. I, I, I also love the word. Open. And I check it every day. Every when day. Are you going to open? Every day. Which one is it? Which hoy is it? They're Tri-color. always labeled. Oh, that is a beauty. I know. I've had that it is a beauty. probably seven years now. And it would oh, be the wow. first time, but that's normal. It can take five to yeah. seven years to bloom. Yeah. So yep. very yep. excited. <laughs> that is exciting. This was my first year also getting bloomed. Oh. I feel like this was the year of the Hoya bloom. Yeah. And you know, everywhere it, right? I look, we needed it. We deserved it. I feel like we've earned those blooms. <laughs> yes. You know, we have Hoyas earned those blooms. are coming through for us. Yes, they are. The Hoyas are coming through. They are. Well, we are going to start winding down, but any last, like, promos for yourself, what you've got going on, things to keep an eye out? that you're working on anything you have the floor. keep an eye out for new designs on plantblur.com i have uh several that are in the hopper and they will be going up in november some fun stuff including some fun potter stuff so keep an eye out for that and i'll be doing a whole it's been a little bit quiet because i've uh you know life but look out for a whole like you know marketing blitz a lot of fun new designs i just love that and that you get to do, like, how blessed are we to get to work with plants every day? Exactly. What made you switch from law to plants, speaking of that? Well, I mean, I I had taken a career break when I had my kids. And it was one of the things that I always thought I'd never, ever do. You know, I never, how could I, could never stay home with my kids. And those were words that I had to salt and pepper because I (laughs) ate them quite (laughs) And, you know, I just couldn't leave them. I just didn't want to. And I was, you know, lucky enough to be able to um, have that time with them. And then after, you know, when it came time to, like, consider reentering the outside of the home workforce, stay-at-home moms do work. They just work inside the home. That's my little plug. Um, I just didn't want to go back to something that would take me away from them and that I'd be miserable at, you know? Right. I wanted to be, um, if it was going to have my time, it would have to be worth my time. Mm -hmm. So 
plants um, just naturally lent themselves to that, you know, because at first it started out as just something that I carved out from for myself that didn't have to do with mothering, wifing, caring for others, volunteer, pro- none of that. This was something that was just for me in which, you know, now it's become kind of like my, um, my gospel that I preach mm-hmm. to anyone willing to listen. Mm-hmm. So, Good you know, you. It, it just was a fluke, but I'm glad that, you know, however we get there, I'm glad I got here. Yeah. Well, we're glad too, because we love everything that you do for the plant community, the black Thank community, you. everything that you're doing on social. We love following along and we're so glad that you are here with us today. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. So we have, we've had we been doing weekly trivia or riddles. So I'm going to read last week's question. It was okay. how many seeds does a strawberry have? What do you think before I announce it? How many seeds does a strawberry have? I think a strawberry has probably about a thousand seeds. 200. That's it? Oh my God. I know. I was shocked too. Only 200. Really? Yeah. It feels seedy, right? So seedy. Yeah, it does. Too in a good kind of way. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. And then today's riddle, which we will announce the answer in next week's podcast. But in the meantime, okay. drop your answers in the comments or in your reviews of this podcast. And then next week we will call out uh, a random winner. So today's riddle. I have hundreds of ears, but I can't hear a thing. Hmm. What am I? And I don't even know the answer yet. So I got it. Ears, but I can't hear a thing. What am I? So we will announce that answer next week. Drop your best guesses in our comments. We will pick randomly a correct answer winner and you'll get a prize. So please drop your answers. Am I disqualified? Because I think I know the answer. I'll drop my answer. Yeah, just (laughs) type it in. You are not disqualified, so please do, (laughs) and we'll we'll find out more next week. So okay, again, thank you all for tuning in to wind down the week with Angie and this week Camille, and thank you for being here with us. This podcast is brought to you by Soul Tech Solutions, Steel City Plant Company, Domasi Home, and Lehigh Valley with Love. Thanks, Plant Fam. See you next week. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.